Good morning, and thank you for tuning in with us this morning at Word of Life Worship Center Online. We hope that we can be a blessing to you today. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the morning service.
watching from around the world, God bless you. We're so glad to have you with us. And I know that, I know that uh, India's watching. I know that the Philippines is watching. I know that Fiji Islands are watching. And that people around America are watching. Amen. And there could be others of you there. If you are from another city, country, nation, go ahead and type in there. Right there where, that, where you can put a comment and let us know what nation you are watching from. We have so many people watching and we are thankful that we can minister to their lives. Now, this morning's message is not everything is free. How many believe that? Not everything is free. There's a lot of folks, there's a lot of folks on the side of the road and they're giving out uh, free phones. We call them government phones, you know. And maybe some of you got a government phone. You think, I got a free phone. I'm going to tell you, it's not free. There's a reason why they're giving you a government phone. They want to keep track of where you are. Amen. God bless you. So praise the Lord. But I want you to look at this picture right quick. This is the picture I wanted to put up before I preach the Word of God. And here is what it says. It says, Noah's Thanksgiving dinner cruise. And he says, how do you manage to get so many tickets to Turkey Ass? Well, I wonder. You know, the Bible says there's only two by two they went in. So two turkeys going in, but the rest of them, they are the meal. Amen. <laughs> they do not know this yet. They think that they're going on a cruise ship. Amen. And you have to understand that not everything is free. And, you, you know, sometimes we think everything's free, but it's not. Okay, you can take that down. And so I want to read the Word of God starting in the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, the Bible says in verse chapter 29, verse, uh, 20, uh, verse 8, start with verse 8. And it says, For, for thus, thus uh, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you, watch what he says, don't let them deceive you. Neither hearken ye to your dreams which you have caused to be dreamed. How many know that a man's way is right in his own eyes? And we see what we want to see when we want to see it. How many know you can say, well, I don't have a car, I can't get to church, but if somebody gave you a ticket to Disneyland, you'll find a way to Los Angeles. You'll, you'll make a way out of no way. Amen. Isn't that true? Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and, and so if, if you're invited to, uh, uh, to give of yourself, to serve and to, and to be a part of something or to give something, you say, well, you know what, Pastor Miller, I don't really have it and I really don't know if I can make it. But if it was in your honor, you'll find a way to be there. You see, the Word of God teaches us, he said, be careful, don't let your diviners deceive you, neither let hearken unto the, your dreams that you cause to be dreamed. He says, but they prophesy, now this is what uh, Jeremiah says, God is, Holy Spirit is speaking through him, the Spirit of God is speaking through him, and he says that he prophesied falsely unto you in my name. How many know there's a lot of people today that are going around saying they're prophets? Now, I'm not against the fivefold ministry. I believe in the fivefold ministry. But I'm going to tell you something very carefully. You have to be very careful. There's a lot of people that are prophesying that are not speaking God's word. Yeah. They're prophesying what people want to hear. They'll tell you what they want to hear. I, I, I had people say that to my life. I, uh, matter of fact, in this church, before we purchased it, I came over and there was a so-called prophet here. And, and I was sitting there where you guys were sitting there. And they came over to me and said that God was going to do such and such within a few years. And this would happen and there would be, and they told me some things. And one of the guys asked me after we got up and left, he said, well, what do you think? I said, well, we'll see what happens. Well, I waited around, did what God told me to do, and never came to pass. Well, what was wrong with that? Well, because a lot of times people will tell you what you want to hear to make you feel good about what you want to feel good about. And we've got to be careful. I don't want to feel good. Let me tell you right now. I, 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 you know, I can feel good in Jesus, but I don't want to feel good with a lie. I don't want to be lied to and, and, and told, you know what, Pastor Miller, you're all right. When I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I say, Lord, search me, search me, shine the light from heaven on me. Whatever you do, do what you got to do. But whatever happens, don't let me be lost. Amen. Because at the end of the day, it ain't about money, it ain't about houses, it ain't about what you get, it ain't about all kinds of stuff you have. At the end of the day, the, uh, you, you shall either be saved or you will be lost. And I want to be saved. Hallelujah. So, Lord, if there's anything in me, if there's any darkness in my heart, if there's any wickedness in my way, if there's any filthiness in my mind, God, reveal it to me. Don't leave me like you found me. Hallelujah. Save me. Deliver me. Set me free. Free me by the Holy Ghost. Do what you got to do inside of me. I don't care if I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough of that. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough of that. I want to be saved at the end of the day. Can I hear at least three people who agree with that say amen? So, so, so he says here 
for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and will perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. God speaking to Israel, he said, I'm going to return you to the place that I intended you to be. I want you to realize that you've allowed things and, and circumstances and people and cultures to deter you from me and cause you to worship false idols and cause you to do all the evil, God speaking to Israel, in my sight. But I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back to what I really wanted you to do. I, I, I've had you around the block long enough. Now it's time to come back and, and let me restore inside of you what needs to be done inside of you. He says here in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Talking to Israel. Now I want you to know even though he is talking to Israel, it is still the character of God. God's character is good. God wants to bless you, but God does not want to bless a mess, and God does not want to bless sin, and God does not want to bless disobedience, and he will not do it. And I don't care what prophet liar gets up in front of you and tell you that you're going to be all right. If you're living wrong, you better repent and get right with God and turn from the things that are wrong and get right with Jesus because you never know when you will depart to see him or he will come to take the church back. So, so we got to get out of the mentality of always looking for someone to bless us and someone to give us a good word. I want not a good word. I want God's word. Amen. I want to know where I stand. I want to know where I'm living. I want to know that I'm doing right. I want to know I'm treating my wife right. I want to know that I'm treating my congregation right. I want to know that I'm treating my neighbor right. I don't want to live wrong and think that I'm all right because somebody then lied to me and told me I was all right. Can I hear somebody say Amen. Don't get in line with the rest of the turkeys. Hallelujah. <laughs> Only two of them are coming back. Glory to God. <laughs> so, so he says here, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. How many believe that God has an expected end for you and I? That that expected end from God is a good end. God has good plans for it. But how many also understand it? If we're not careful, we can detour those things. We can interrupt those things. We can interfere with those things. I cannot live unto sin, unto death, and expect God to be happy with me when he sees me. You know, the Bible talks about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It also talks about living to sin unto death. Unforgivable sins. Why is that? Because I live this way until I die. And after I died, Revelation says that I've remained the same whatsoever condition, whether I'm righteous, whether I'm wrong, whether I'm good, whether I'm evil, I remain that the moment I cross through the veil of death. So he said, don't live that way. He said, I want you to understand that the, the plan that I have for you, the expected end that I have for you is a good end. It's a good plan, but you've got to get with the program. The Bible says here, he says, to give not evil, but to give you an expected end. And there's verse 12 says, And then shall they call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me. Watch this word. You shall find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Now think with me for a moment. The church of Jesus Christ today is it, it, really a, a, a very interesting place because churches and pastors uh, in some ways have to jump through a lot of hoops to get people's attention because people are looking for something. They, they, they're, well, we're going to go to that church because that church offers a certain thing. Well, I'm not going to go there anymore because I don't like what they do. And, and, and it's not about you. Never has been about you. But we make it about ourselves, and we have to try to compete with uh, uh, Barnum and Bailey's circus. Now, how many know I'm not talking about the literal circus place, but we have to compete trying to keep folks in here and, and trying to do the right thing and make sure that we didn't do anything wrong. To, but, and, and, and that's a sad shame because what's happened is that people aren't really seeking after God. They're seeking out what they can get for themselves. Amen. And if they don't like what God said, don't like what the preacher said, they get mad and they move on down the road. 
We live in an age where, where, where some folk in, in the church years ago, you know, people would go to church and become part of a church, be members of a church, and would be there for years and lifetime, raising their kids there and their grandkids and so on, because that was the church that their family went to. But when, when the day of internet came, where you started getting exposure to all the things that are out there, you start saying, well, my God, my church don't offer Bozo the Clown for our kids. And so all of a sudden now you begin to change your attitude and your allegiance and your loyalties and you begin to change the vision of what God's put in your heart and you start seeking after things that are going to appease your flesh. And I'm going to tell you something, ain't nothing wrong with having nice things, ain't nothing wrong with having pleasure, but I'm going to tell you something, you got to be careful because the devil is a master deceiver. And he'll deceive you out of a root thing, a thing that was a foundation by which God has done something in your life, a foundation upon which God is moving, and the enemy will deceive you and move you out of your position. People are being deceived today out of their marriages. You've been married for 30 years, 40 years. You better hang on to that person, glory to God. That's the person who loves you and cares for you. But you're going to go out there and find you somebody because he's good looking or she's good looking. And those things, I mean, how many know good looks and bad looks come, come alike? They all come together eventually at, at, at the inter intersection. Uh, uh, what's good looking will eventually, will eventually become not so good after a while. I mean, I know there's some good looking old folks, but not every old folk is good looking. Amen. And we got to start living our life for what looks good and start to understand the quality by which that marriage is built upon. Is built upon the quality of love and relationship in children and family. You know, come on, Grandpa out there now, he didn't got him a new girlfriend and got, he didn't get his hair. Hey, you too old for all that. You know, heaven's coming too quick and hell is too short. Hallelujah. And you need to repent of that and live right. I know y'all don't want to hear that this morning. I, I'm just trying to tell it. I'm just trying to keep it real. Amen. You know, if I get too, too, too busy up here, you just say, keep it real, Pastor. Let's keep it real. But it's the truth, you know, the generation, they're searching after everything but God. Yeah. It's not important anymore. What does God want? No, this is what I feel. This is what I want. This is what I think. You see, we have to get out of that and humble ourselves before God and say, God, forgive me for being selfish and self-centered. Father, please let me do your will. Lord, do inside of me what you and only you can do and must do. Oh, God, keep my mind, keep my heart in this evil hour. You see, uh, you know, a, a thousand years from now, I plan on being in heaven. I mean, I'm not waiting until a thousand years to get there. I'm talking about a, a thousand years from now, I want to be in heaven. I want to be in heaven and walk in the streets of glory, and I want to see every one of you there. I want to be able to look over and say, hey, how you doing? Oh, doing great. Good to see you here. Praise God. You come on by and get some of my butter cake. Amen. Glory to God. I want to see you there. I don't want you to be on the other side of the fence talking about, oh, Pastor Miller, please ask Jesus to do something. No, it's too late. I'm doing all I can to ask Jesus to help you right here now. This is the reason I preach the way I preach. This is the reason I teach the way I teach. I'm trying to stir you up. I'm trying to get you out of the fires of hell. I'm trying to help you to understand without holy living, you will not see God. Amen. Oh, I don't like that. The church down the street, don't tell us nothing. We have a liberal idea. Well, that's them. But I'm telling you what the word says. We need to understand that God said to Israel, well, you'll find me when you search for me with your whole heart. The Word of God teaches us to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. Now, as we search for Him with our whole heart, and we seek after Him, after God, until we find Him, we, we will only find God through His truth. Yes. You'll not find God through emotions, your emotions, my emotions, my ideas, your philosophies, my philosophies, others' philosophies. We will only find God when we search for God in the truth. Jesus said to them, you think you have life eternal? Search the scriptures. They speak of me. You know, without him, we understand that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so we have to grab a hold of truth and allow truth to grab a hold of us until we are converted as we are pressing our lives in on a daily basis. Now, the generation, this generation, and I say this generation because it is, it is quite evident that this is a generation that is quite 
uh, 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 satisfied with seeking what is comfortable or what is comforted. Someone showed me, so I'm trying to think who it was. I think it, I think it was you, Mama. You, you showed me yesterday about people said, well, well I, I'm suffering here, and I'm suffering there, and I, I have no money, and I have no food, and I have no clothes. She showed me a little thing she wrote down. I have none of these things. And then when they came to the name Jesus, because these are all the other people, when they came to the name Jesus, Jesus said, can you be crucified? You see, what happens is we complain about suffering, but he suffered for us. He died on the cross. And I wonder, I wonder if we could bear that cross. I mean, thank God for the suffering. The suffering, the things that we go through are light in comparison to what he had to pay for our salvation. And they are in no comparison to the glory that will be revealed to us when we see heaven. Amen. So whatever you're going through, my God, it may be hard. You may not understand it. You may say, God, why are you allowing me to do this? Why am I going through this? What, am I, what have I done wrong? But, but, but friend of mine, the very thing that you're going through is no comparison to the great joy and the great glory that one day, a thousand years from today, you will walk inside of in heaven. Hallelujah. You say, my, you say, well, well I, I've struggled so much with this body. Oh, this body's always sick. Oh, why won't God heal me? Oh, I'm suffering with my mind. My mind is always so battling, so taxed and confused. Why won't God heal me? Oh, I'm suffering, suffering, suffering. Oh, but there's a day coming. As you are surely here today, there's a day coming where you will not suffer anymore. When God will say enough suffering is done for you, and now you can step into the glory of God. And one day, hallelujah, we're going to look at you in heaven, and we won't see a suffering saint. We'll see a victorious saint. We'll see somebody that has passed through the veil of life and has overcome because of the blood and because of the relationship with God. I thank God that he has not called me or allowed me or have asked me or required of me that I would suffer so much that my brothers and sisters in the world are suffering in other countries. You know, there's a thing called Martyrs for Christ, and you can read those magazines and you see some of the stuff that's happening in those people's lives, and you can only cringe and thank God that it has not happened in America yet. But the way we're going, we're so divided and so angry with each other, intolerant of each other. Well, you know, when you believe this, you believe that, and if you believe this and you believe that, and we don't agree, we want to fight over it. This world's getting intolerant. What will happen one day when they say, well, it's the Christians' fault, and we get all the Christians. How many, how many of you will remain Christians if you have to suffer? So we've got to be very careful that we don't get the bad attitude with God, that, that every time we have to go through something, we complain and bellyache about it. But we ought to thank God and take it, especially when they accuse us or lie on us falsely. You know, the Bible says you ought to let the glory of God rest upon you, and you ought to rejoice in that. So please, this generation seeks to comfort it in their own ideas of what they think. And yet the Bible says in John, the eighth chapter uh, uh, of verse 32, the Bible says something very interesting. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you what? Free. The truth of God is going to make you free. How, how many believe this morning that God wants to make you free? How many believe that God wants to do that? He, want, he, he don't want you to be bound up in, in sin and bound up in fear and bound up in, 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 in confusion. God wants to make you free. But freedom, freedom comes with a price. Not everything is free that's free. And the freedom sometimes that you have to understand that if I'm going to be free, I'm going to have to persevere. I'm going to have to grab a hold of truth and bring truth into my bosom to where I embrace this truth as the absolute truth. God said it in his word. This is what God said. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I want you to say to somebody, it will make you free. Freedom has a path of, uh, that works for all generations. Let me tell you something. Freedom is not free because someone gives you something or someone says, well, this doesn't cost. How I many know if, if, I were to, if I were to go out and buy bottles of water and hand them to you and say, and you would say, oh my God, these are free. Well, they're free to you, but somebody paid a price for it. How I many know salvation is free to you, 
but Jesus paid the price for it. Amen. How many of you just follow Jesus Christ may be free, but it'll cost you. Amen. Oh, let me talk to somebody know what I'm talking about. To follow Christ is going to cost you. Amen. You might as well get out of your mind that all your friends are going to like you. <clears throat> friends you've been had men hanging out with and you've been growing up together and you've been hung out with your friends and all of a sudden now they don't seem to like you anymore because you don't do what they want to do. You don't go the way they want to go. You know, they'll tell you things like, well, you know, you, you don't have to get all religious on me. You can still come and have fun. Well, listen, listen to me, folks. Listen, people say all the time, well, do you, do you still go to clubs and dance? I said, no, I don't go to clubs and, and I didn't dance that much when I did dance. But I still dance. You, you still dance. I dance with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I dance with Jesus. I dance with praise. I dance with worship. The Bible says dance before the Lord. So what I'm trying to get you to understand that you've got to set a mindset in you that not everybody's going to like you when you decide to do the right thing. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So, so the Word of God tells us that freedom has a path that works for every generation. The freedom that God gives to us, the path does not change with time. The path does not change with eternity. That means that what happens in time and, in, and what happens in the, in the eternal future will not change the path of freedom. And the path of freedom is the Word of God. God's Word will not change. It will not alter. It will not do that. Now, the Bible says in John, the 16th chapter, just turn there with me, verse 13. And here the Bible says something very interesting. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, he will what? Guide you unto all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will uh, shew you things to come. So the Holy Spirit's job, in a uh, in, 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 uh, partial job of the Holy Spirit, is that he will guide us into truth. How many want the Spirit of God to tell you the truth? How, how many has ever gone to an amusement park where you've gone in front of one of those mirrors? You ever gone in front of those mirrors where they're kind of slightly warped, you know, they, they kind of turn them in or turn them out? If they turn them out, you look tall and thin. If they turn them in, you look short and stubby. And you get in front of that mirror, just like you do at your home, because your mirrors at your house, like my mirrors at my house, they lie to me. And when they take a, when someone takes a picture, you look at that, you go, that's not me, that is you. That's not the one I saw, because what I saw in my own eyes was something totally different. So you get in front of those mirrors that are the stretch mirrors, and we were kids, and I remember Chicago, and we would go to the Riverview uh, Park, and, and, and there would have a mirror there, and my brother and I, we would stretch in front of there, we'd do all kind of stuff and, and all that. But, but how many of that was not telling me the truth? But it made me, what? It made me feel good. Oh, am I talking to somebody? You see, when people lie to you, they make you feel good. They walk up to you, you know you're gaining weight. They say, you, you losing weight. You go, oh, I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really trying. Well, you're, don't worry, honey, it ain't working. Hallelujah. <laughs> we hope that you are enjoying your time so far. But before we get back to Pastor Miller, here's a little more information about some things going on here at Word of Life. I am. 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 Learn more about our church at WLWC.org. Hello, and thank you for all your donations here at Word of Life. We would like to introduce to you four different ways to give your tithes and offering. You can do it in person. You can do it on your mobile, website, or text message. For text message, all you have to do is text GIVE to 619-313-5757. You can also give online. It is easy, safe, and secure at WLWC.org. Just click GIVE online at the bar above, and you can use PayPal. You can also download the Venmo app for either Google devices or at the App Store for free. This is an easy way to give. All you have to do is make an account. Hope you're ready to get back into this powerful word with Pastor Miller. The Bible says in John the 8th chapter, verse 33, it says, And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. 
How sayest thou that we shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided. For if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. See, God has a plan this morning. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I know by the Holy Ghost that there are people here today, there are people watching today that need this message. You need to be free. You've been carrying around Christianity on the outer source, but inside there's, it's, it's really hard. You look good on the outside. You see all the right Christian things. How are you doing? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. But you're so miserable inside, and you're not miserable because God's against you. You're miserable because you won't give God his way. And God wants to free folks up in here. Amen. You say, well, I've, I've been going down to the, to, the, to the last church on the left for 30 years, and, and, and I ain't never heard an insult like that in my life. Well, good you're here. Praise God. I'm glad you came to get your insult for this week. Amen. Because I'm trying to insult you to victory. I'm trying to insult you to overcoming. I'm trying to insult you to get healed. I'm trying to insult you to get blessed financially. I'm trying to insult you to come to a place where you surrender to God and say, God, I'm miserable because I'm all dried up with my own ideas. God, I'm yielding my body to the Holy Ghost and I'm going to yield to truth so the truth can set me free. I wish somebody give God a shout and give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for a church like this. Thank God for a preacher like this. Tell you the truth. Look you right in the eye and tell you the truth. Am I losing weight? No, you ain't losing weight. You're having just as much problem as I got. Amen. We're working on it though. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I mean, to tell you the truth, you know. I mean, am I going gray? Oh, yeah, you already gray. You just... People don't like that, do they? They don't want to just tell me a lie. Oh, there's no gray hair on you. How old are you now? Well, I'm 66. Well, you ain't got no gray at all. And you know, you can't lie to people like that. How many don't want people lying to you? I mean, if your shoes are too, if your feet too fat for your shoes, somebody should tell you about it. They shouldn't let you go walk out there with fat feet in your shoes, your shoes hanging out, your, your feet hanging out of your shoes. Tell me, don't I look like Lena Horn? No, you don't look like Lena Horn. You, Look like a horn, but not Lena. Huh? Come on. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I shouldn't say that, huh? This church. That should be nice. I'm sorry. Not. Nah. But anyway, the, the Word of God tells us the truth will set you free. Now, let's move on. He says here in chapter 8 of verse 44, and you are, now this is what, Je this is what Jesus, everybody, everybody say, I love Jesus. I love All right. And everybody loves Jesus until Jesus tells you the truth. When Jesus tells you the truth, then you go, because, you know, if I, if I say it, you say, that's rude. You, you know, as a pastor, you shouldn't, say, you shouldn't speak like that. Right? But Jesus says something. I want you to hear what Jesus said. He says here in John 8, verse 44, he says, you are of your father, the devil. Oh, do you, th do you think that made those folks mad? <laughs> oh, well, they come, oh, happy, happy. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, they, they, they were upset. Jesus just came along and said, you are of the devil, your father. And they kind of looked at him like, who's this kid? And Jesus said, you are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning and aboded not in truth because there is no, what? No truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his what? His own. For he is the, a liar and the father of it. Satan is a master deceiver. If you're not careful, child of God, the devil will talk you out of what good things God has for your life. If you're not careful, child of God, he'll talk you out of that good marriage that you're inside of. You say, oh, I got problems. Well, work it out. You can work it out. Well, he, you know, I don't know if we love each other. Well, learn how to love each other. Amen. Lock yourself up in a room and learn how to love each other. Amen. Because if you're looking for love out in the street, you're not going to find love in the street. You got a little money? So anybody will go with you. No, I just won the lotto. I just won 80 million. You find all kinds of people to come up. I mean, just, you know, you, you win the lotto in California? 80 million dollars in your pocket? You could be stone cold ugly. People love you and follow you, serve you. 
marry you. I mean, come on and tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. You know, my friend, my, my mom's friend, uh, you used to be friends with James Brown. How many of you ever heard of James Brown? James Brown was an ugly man. I mean, I'm just being true. It's okay, yeah. Yes, Lord? Okay. He was a funny looking man. But he could sure attract people. Why? Because he had money. You get somebody like, like, like uh, when, when, and I don't mean to name folks, but these movie stars, you know, when they get old, but they still got all that money. And I saw one lady, she got so old. She was a beautiful woman in, in, in the early 60s. Beautiful. But she got old. And she had some young man on top of her husband. And I looked at her and I said, Lord, I was in the Philippines. Philippines. And there was this 80-year-old man walking around with this young girl on his arm. And I'm looking. And I'm going, Lord Jesus. Smart woman. Glory to God. All right. Second Thessalonians, I'll just leave it there. Second Thessalonians, Satan is a massive deceiver. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, I got to go. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, to verse 17. He said, In the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and it only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. And, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be, watch for the word, saved for this cause, because they wouldn't receive it. God shall, cause, shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because that God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to, to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or epistle, for our Lord Jesus Christ himself and the God, even the fa our Father, which have loved us and have given us an everlasting constellation and, and good hope through grace. He says, Comfort yourselves or your hearts and establish you in every good work. Be patiently waiting, child of God. Don't be so easily persuaded. Don't get in the wrong line just because everybody's in it. Well, it must be, the Lord must be blessing. No, the, the Lord ain't always blessing. How many know the, the slaughterhouse is full of cows? Amen. And all the cows are going in, they're going to feed us. No, they're not going to feed you. They're going there to slaughter you. You've got to be careful. The devil is looking for those who he can deceive. If you want to be assured of not being deceived in this last hour, hold to the word of God's truth. Grab a hold of it, read it, meditate in it, speak it forth, believe upon it. Ask God to help you. Say, God, you say here to love my enemies. It's so hard, God, to love people who hurt me. But Lord, show me how. Give me the strength, Father God. See, some of the problems that people have in, a, in our world today is things that they have held in their hearts. How many know your past, it always comes with history? And there are things in your history that hurt your heart. There are people that have done you wrong. And you vowed that I'm not going to ever forget, I'm not going to ever forgive them. And that's the thing that's blocking your future. It's blocking God from bringing his good into your life. It's blocking God from bringing an expected end in your life. And you've got to let go of those things. And I know they hurt. I've experienced it. You've experienced it. We have all. If you've been in church long enough, you've experienced it. People will always say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, say something that's insulting. Oh, you ought to hear some of the things that people say. And then you look at them and go, oh, i got to love them. <laughs> you know, and, and we have to learn by God's grace. Father God, change my heart. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be able to love. Imagine coming to your own and your own receiving you not. One last scripture. It tells us in Philippians chapter 1, and I hope this 
brings some comfort to you this morning. Hope it brings hope to you this morning. And that is in Philippians chapter 1. It says in verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun, he is God, who has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, I, I, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking last night as I was praying, meditating in the Word of God, and I said to myself, I said, self, surely as life is today, there'll come a last day. You understand what I just said? There'll, there'll come a day in whatever format would be your departure. I don't know. But there'll come a day where you'll be able to lay there, meditate, and think, all right, I'm about to see him. And I hope and pray you'll become an old person, an old man, old woman. Got your grandkids, great-grandkids around you. And you assure them, as surely as I live today, I shall see him. So I know that what God has started in your lives, he's going to finish it. You, you may have to go through a rough patch here and there, but that's okay. You'll get through it just like we all get through everything. And you will be so glad that you had a pastor that told you the truth. That told you that just hold on. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give in. Don't get mad at folks. Don't be bitter. Just hold on. He'll finish the work he started. He'll perform it to a good level. And then one day, you'll, you'll see him. And when you see him, Messiah, Savior, Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Master of the Universe, Abba, Father, you will see what I'm going to tell you next. He will be a young man, not an old man, but he will be the Ancient of Days. And he will be the bright and morning star, and in his eyes will be all of life and love and joy and peace. And when he looks at you, and he says, well done, your mind may reflect back, I didn't always do it right. And the Lord said, let's look at this. And for a moment's time, he'll show you everything. And you'll understand things you've never thought possible to understand. And you'll see clearly why it had to be that way. And you'll understand how many were affected and changed because you allowed God to do a work in you. And you will thank God, at least I will, that he didn't let me be caught up in some lie, it's false religion, some devil worship. Thank God that he brought me to his throne to be saved, be born again. Amen. You must be born again. Now, except a man's born again, you cannot make heaven. You're not going to go to heaven because you go to church. Not going to go to heaven because your family go to church. You've got to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. All right, so how do I do that? Well, the Bible says if you call upon him, he'll save you. Let's pray. We're together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me now. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I believe right now you are born again. I believe the Spirit of God now lives inside of you. Now find a good Bible, believe in church. Don't just go anywhere. Find a church that preaches the whole Word of God. Find a preacher somewhere that'll preach about holiness, about obedience, and about repentance. Don't just go anywhere and join the cattle. Not all roads lead to heaven, and not everything is free. We hope that you have enjoyed this service and it blesses you for the rest of your week. If you'd like additional information about our church or you would like to view this service again, please go online at wlwc.org. And please join us at social media with Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you would like additional information about our church, you can contact us with the number and the address on the screen. We hope that you enjoyed this service and have a blessed week and we'll see you next time.